Welcome to the Mind Deck Books podcast, Christmas and New Year's wholesome special. My name is Philip, and joining me is Chan. <laughs> Welcome to episode thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. <laughs> oh my God! Mind Ducks, Mind Duck Books podcast. Well, we're very happy to have you back, Chan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been more than that. Um, forty-five. More. Forty-eight. This is episode fifty-nine of the <laughs> My Dark Books podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but Chen's a little bit out of touch because it's Christmas and it's uh, New Year's holidays, so you don't have to think of numbers. <laughs> Just <laughs> enjoying the free time. Very happy to have you back on the podcast to talk about the most wholesome Czech book we could find and have something relaxing and nice and very lovely to discuss during the holidays. Yay! So what is the book we're talking about today? Darshinka! <laughs> <laughs> so to have a look at some Czech culture which is definitely underappreciated around the world because people usually don't know what it is. Darshinka is a Czech name which is not probably not Czech, it's probably somewhere else. But if you make it smaller and smaller and smaller, it's Dashenka. But the original name is Dagmar. Yeah, which is crazy to me. So it's from uh, Old Norse Dagmer, Dagmar, Dagr, something like that. <laughs> meaning day or daughter or mother or maiden. So It's a lot of meanings. So it came from Northern Europe, I guess, and then... In English, Dagmar, and then in Czech, we have suffixes to make words smaller and smaller. So we made it from Dagmar to Dasha to Dashenka. Yeah, so she's like the littlest Dagmar. <laughs> <laughs> so today we'd like to discuss a little cute dog called Dashenka. This is a very, very famous book. So famous, in fact, that there is a Japanese restaurant in Tokyo called Dashenka that we've never been to. But and, we want to go. And the reason we've never been there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and also the reason how we met. Mm -hmm. Would you like to tell us? Yeah, so this guy, this guy, the host of this show, is obviously Czech, but he hates Czech food. And so <laughs> <laughs> he refuses to take me to this restaurant because he doesn't <laughs> want to deal with Czech people and he doesn't want to eat Czech food. And in fact, he said when he goes, he's going to pretend like he's not even Czech. <laughs> and <laughs> basically, long story short, we started hanging out, not met, but started hanging out because I was like, yeah, I don't know about the Czech Republic. What's there? And he said, well, let me show you. It's shit. <laughs> and, and, and he showed me uh, the some of the worst food I've ever seen in my life. And I laughed until I cried. Yeah, Czech couldn't stop. <laughs> Jen asked me about our lovely Czech traditions. I showed her some photos of our traditional, very, very special dishes. And she couldn't stop laughing. She almost died. <laughs> That's one of the first conversations we've ever had when we first met. So. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> So now there's a restaurant called Ashenka, we have to go, so we'll, we'll, we'll tell you about that later if, if we, we survive it. And <laughs> <laughs> so Dashenka is a little, little dog, and this is a children's book with lovely illustrations by Karel Čapek. Have you ever heard of Karel Čapek before? No. He's uh, the most uh, renowned, the most, I guess, famous Czech writer who is responsible for the word robot. Mm. And he wrote sci-fi theater plays, and one of the theater plays was called R U R R U R. I'm trying to say, not say R U R. <laughs> <It's in Czech>. <laughs> <laughs> so that means Rossum's Universal Robots, mm. and because in Czech, if you say robota, it means uh, like hard work, like you go on a work shift. Uh. So then, robot is just a thing that works on its own. Mm. And he's written a lot of. Very important stuff and very serious stuff that we shall not talk about today very much because it's it's a holiday spirit. <laughs> <laughs> But when he took a break from politics and sci-fi and serious topics, he got a dog. And how would you describe this dog? <laughs> Which one? Dachenka. <laughs> She's bad. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's her fault. I think she's spoiled. Like I think. Throughout the book, there's no mention of her ever being trained 
at all. So she just <laughs> does what she wants. So she's bad. <laughs> she's really bad. <laughs> so they actually had a dog already. Her name was Iris, I think. Mm. And she had a daughter, uh, young Dashenka. And Dashenka was born. And the book follows her life, how she's born, how she first opens her eyes, how she learns to walk. And also she's told stories to sit in place and be distracted because uh, Karel Čepek was also a photographer and he was trying to take a picture, but it was impossible. <laughs> so he was trying to distract the puppy to take a picture and not just wreak havoc constantly. Yeah, so the dog or the puppy would sort of listen to his stories. I don't, I don't know why, <laughs> maybe because he was just talking, so she would sit down, but yeah. <laughs> So he also did illustrations, which are probably the most famous and probably why they, of course, love Dashenka illustrations in Japan. Mm. Super yeah. cute. Yeah. Uh, it was translated into English as an educational tool for Czech children to study English. So if you want to read it, you can find it in English. And you can also find an animated TV show we just watched. How would you describe the show? <laughs> yeah, it was fun to see the stories that he told. So it's nice to visualize it. So Mr. Bratislav Poyar made an animated series, which is half live action puppy <laughs> cuteness with a pathetic uh, puppy crawling yeah. around. And then the second half is like a story from the book animated. Yeah, it's cute. I only eight episodes from this and it's, it's just like five minutes. And you can find it on YouTube if you want to if you want to see it. It's with English subtitles. Yeah. So this book came out in 1933. It's only 78 pages. And like I said, Karol Čepek, he died very young. And there are a lot of things connected to Czech history, but let's not discuss them. Ho hopefully one day we'll cover like R.U.R. with the robots or something else. Or the war with the newts, which was my favorite as a child. It's a sci-fi story where newts uh, grow sentient and intelligent and they battle other nations. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like a, it's a comic book and it's a, it's a theater play. But yes. So how did you like this book? How did you like Dashenka? Uh, yeah, I like the book. Like, I think it's something cute to read, especially if you like dogs. I mean, I'm not a dog lover, but I, I like dogs. Very adorable, but maybe the only thing I didn't like was just, yeah, they didn't train her. The entire <laughs> time, the whole story... Like, Darshinka's just up to stuff. Like, she's digging up stuff in the garden. Or, like, she keeps bothering her mom. Or she's breaking stuff. Or she pees in the house. Or whatever. And it, they're like, oh, Darshinka. And it's like, teach Darshinka. <laughs> just teach her. I'm not saying she'll listen to everything. But they did not teach her anything. They just kind of <laughs> reacted to her. Which, like... You know, like they didn't mistreat her. They were just kind of huffy or tired. But they, they, you know, she just didn't know anything. <laughs> Darshinka is a stupid dog because no one taught her anything. <laughs> but like, it's a cute story. I thought they were trying to be nice. They were trying to be wholesome and just like have, yeah. a, have it as a joke that she's doing mm. all these bad things. Yeah. But I think to some degree they didn't do, <laughs> do anything. <laughs> when you open the book, the book starts with a premise that we should be nice to every creature. We shouldn't pull each other's ears. Yes. We shouldn't bite each other's ears. We should yes. be nice to dogs. And if we are as nice to dogs as uh, to ourselves, as everybody else, the world will be a better place. Yes, but like what they did in Darshinka is kind of what people do in real life. You get two nice parents that get together and they have a child and they're so nice that their child runs amok and then they grow up to be an asshole. <laughs> that, that's that's <laughs> what that's kind of what Darshinka grew up to be. She's kind of an asshole and it's not her fault. <laughs> it's just that like no one taught her to be better. Like you know you can discuss things. You don't necessarily have to punish but you can just be like you know there's a better way. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. So they didn't they weren't like you know oh it's about that time that Darshinka needs to pee and they, they took her out She's pizza somewhere. And they're like, ah, oh, Darshinka. <laughs> so, I, I don't know how to describe it, but, like, you can be <laughs> kind, but also teach someone. To, it's not, I don't think it's kindness to leave someone in ignorance. And Darshinka was left in ignorance. <laughs> I'm sure so, they, they brought her up properly. It was just for the cuteness and joke of the story. 
of course a tough love is necessary <laughs> and you should teach dogs to be nice dogs but yeah think... but it did yeah of course all her adventures were fun to read so yeah yeah do you all kind of talk about spoilers i guess <laughs> because i'm not sure we can like this this requires a spoiler section mm-hmm. but we just talk about some of the stories uh there are maybe like three sections to this book One of them is the growing up and how she learns to do stuff. The other part is a few short fairy tales to distract Dashenka from running around. And then there is a attachment of loads of photos that are super cutesy and illustrations yeah. about Dashenka. But the story starts with her being born and they call her a little whitey nothing, <laughs> which cannot even move and walk. <laughs> <laughs> which is fun in the first episode of the animated show <laughs> and when one eye opens it's a whole new world and she has to recognize things and learn how to get from one side of the basket to the other basket but it's so <laughs> exhausting and she, as Chen put it that she almost died doing it <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole section about her learning to move her feet she always has a problem to recognize which is the front and the back one and which one to put in the front and under it and then she falls on her belly and the foot is stuck and she can't move over and... <laughs> <laughs> so she always has to be rescued from trying to crawl on from one side to the other and at one point she learns how to you know eat something else than than milk Yeah. And then she learns how to make little puddles. It's like a joke that keeps <laughs> repeating. So everywhere in the house there are little puddles. Yeah. <laughs> and she grows as if she was growing from water, which is a Czech idiom. There's many Czech idioms in mm-hmm. this. I don't know how to translate, but is there an idiom in English where you grow as fast as possible? Like like from some super special source in Czech we say shot up like a bean sprout, That's it, yes. Maybe? That's, it. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> so in Czech it's just we grow from water. Because we have nothing else. <laughs> 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 so if you grow as if you grew from water, then you grow really fast. But I'm not sure where the sustenance is in that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a lot of stories about Dashenka just destroying everything. I thought there was something in the house that she just kept like chewing it or something. I can't remember. She's chewing at shoes, of course, and yeah, pantyhoses. But, and... but there was like... Like, was it a piece of furniture that she had torn up or something? It was or... a broom she destroyed. And <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe the flower like pots. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I just like her gardening in general, because animals are always funny when they're gardening, because you're they're not gardening, they're just digging up stuff. So <laughs> I like her digging up everything. <laughs> At one point, there is a summary of all the destroyed objects in the house and the garden, oh, and yeah. each of them has a price, and then they count down, count count up how many <laughs> check crowns it costs for <laughs> Dashenka to destroy all this stuff. So <laughs> all together, it was three uh, thousand check crowns. But I don't know, like, what's what is that? Like in yeah. yen. In yen, that's about 15,000 yen or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her smile here. <laughs> so they go through her growing up and then she starts running and starts jumping and she can run faster than the mother. Poor mother is being completely devastated because Jashenka loves to bite on her ears and bite on her legs. There are many photos yeah. where she's biting on her mom. She's biting everything. <laughs> Then she likes to fight her mom and <laughs> and uh, yeah, poor mother. Do you remember how the story ends with Tashenka? Yeah, they give her away. Yeah, spoiler. <laughs> like, like what? I don't remember that because I read this as a child. I grew up with this, and they Tashenka was so bad they just <laughs> just gave up. But that that's what makes me think that like you know, of course they're just putting in the bad parts. You know, like to make the story like. Here's this lovable little puppy, but, you know, she's not perfect and she does all this stuff, but we still love her, sort of, whatever. But that, it's that part that makes me think they really didn't train her. Not just jokes about it. It's not like they kept her. They gave her away. That's how bad she was. So that tells me they didn't teach her shit. (laughs) (laughs) So... (laughs) <laughs> they yeah they get rid of her 
<laughs> in fact, they talk about getting some peace of mind or whatever. So yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. it's, it's not like the writer was poor or that they didn't have much space or that they had other animals <laughs> or children. Nothing. It's him, his wife, and a small tame dog that lived there. And you're telling me they can't have two dogs? She was bad, and because of them. <laughs> so hopefully, I mean, she was still a puppy when they gave her away. In fact, so hopefully she got some better training at her other household. But. <laughs> So the the uh, section with the diary ends with a, an illustration where there is a fluffy mom that's got really long fur and a small <laughs> tiny little nothing that's Dashenka, and the title says before, and then there is a second picture that says after, and Dashenka is about five times bigger, and the mom looks super worn down and old and has no fur anymore. <laughs> yeah. and Dashenka looks like an athletic dog. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the mom just looks like she's on her last limb. <laughs> she goes very healthy and sturdy. And <laughs> and the chapter, ch- the chapter reads that so came the day where some foreign people came to pick up Dashenka and took her in their bag away, and we kept reassuring them that she's a lovely and calm and wonderful <laughs> dog, and definitely haven't mentioned that that day she broke four windows in the garden <laughs> <laughs> and destroyed all the flower beds. After they left in the house, it was uh, sacred silence. Thank God. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he says, the writer writes the last line of this part is that in the doghouse, I just look at uh, the mother Iris, who looks really worn down and is uh, crying alone in the doghouse. So it's really sad. Like. Yeah. Because I think they gave her away also, like, she is still, like, puppy enough, like, you know, like, they're still attached to mm-hmm. their puppy. So that's that's why I, the only part of the story I don't really like, because I really think, like, the, the writer or, you know, the family could have done better by Darshinka. <laughs> Obviously, it makes a better story that she was so bad and naughty or whatever, like, if she was just a good little dog, maybe it's not interesting to read. Mm-hmm. But... You know, he talks about all this kindness and all this other stuff and treatment. And, you know, kindness doesn't mean you just don't do anything. Yeah. And I think many people in real life on other topics believe that that is a kindness. Oh, I didn't say anything bad to that person. That's kind. That's not what that means. <laughs> so, I, yeah. So, yeah, I feel a bit bad for the the mommy dog because i think she's a good dog (laughs) but otherwise if you don't read the ending i guess it's like a fun like you Mm -hmm. know a real insight to i don't know a growing pet or animal that you (laughs) have (laughs) it's super cutesy and it's uh, wonderful with the czech idioms and like the language is very cutesy Mm -hmm. i'm not sure how it translates into english but it's uh it's fun yeah, you just have to add on teeny weensies here and there or teeny tinies <laughs> and it makes sense. I absolutely <laughs> didn't remember this ending. I was shocked. <laughs> this only shows you that Czech fairy tales aren't always realistic. Uh, they always show you the real truth. <laughs> you got that influence from Germany and they're not having any happy endings. So. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the first section. The second part is about uh, taking photos of Dashenka. Yeah. Lots of uh, funny illustrations and there are some of the Short stories, short tales that are about uh, fox terriers. We never said Dashenka is a fox terrier. Mm. It's a rough furred fox terrier, or in correct translation, it's wire or something. Oh, uh, wired? Wired hair or something? Yeah. Did I say wire? I don't know, fox terriers. But it did <laughs> say wire or something. I'll find it anytime. Wire fox terrier, yeah. Mm. So the stories are about the history of fox terriers and they answer some uh, important questions such as why do fox terriers have short tails Hmm. or why do they dig all the time or why do they uh, have the black spot in their mouth and stuff like that. Yeah, but maybe that's part we shouldn't have too many spoilers. Just like (laughs) maybe just know that these stories are more creative than you might think. So it's an incentive to read the book to know (laughs) the whys because the the stories that the guy is telling Darshinka, which are these stories mm-hmm. when he wants her to sit down and, you know, he wants to take a picture or he wants some peace and quiet. He tells her one of these origin stories and they're always very creative and fun the mm-hmm. way they came about. So I think I like to do two that I liked. Okay. Uh, both of them involve a Czech idiom, of course, because it's always a play on words. <laughs> so the first one, that's probably the most famous. But spoiler! People... 
okay. the audience. <laughs> Spoilers! It was such a big deal. But, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to read this and not be spoiled about Dashenka, please stop listening <laughs> and come back later. Yeah, like I don't know, come back in like it ten minutes. Ta- it will tell you. It will take you max ten minutes to read this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the first story is why do fox terriers have a short tail and why do they have the tails cut? So would you like to tell it? Okay, so all these stories are short, but that story has lots of detail. But basically, there's some brave little fox terrier, like, whatever, long ago. I don't know how this history was even written. Obviously, it's just made up, but it's supposedly like a tale that all fox terriers know now. So (laughs) I guess they bark it to their their young, and their young bark it to their children. I don't know. Like, obviously. (laughs) But so anyway, basically there was long ago this mighty hero fox terrier that was super brave, even like fought a dragon and Mm -hmm. all this stuff. And he also fought some king that couldn't see very well. So before we say that, how how did he fight? (laughs) Just with his fists. No, tail. It's a tail. Yeah, but that's with the king. So I'm I'm, I'm getting there. So... He fought off some dragon. They're just telling about his feats. So he also fought fought some king for some reason. Like he wasn't a good guy. Who is that's a king? But (laughs) so anyway, the king couldn't see very well. And I think he knocked the king down or something. And, you know, the fox terrier's tail was wagging a bunch. I guess they wagged their tails a lot. And the king thought it was a sword. So he was fighting the tail and he cut it off. And (laughs) then the fox terrier, you know, got all upset about it. But not like sad. He, He was mad. And... He attacked the the king and he like bit part of his trousers off, but they like mention, you know, like a saying, you know, like in English, your heart drops into your stomach. They mm-hmm. said something like it so dropped in, into their trousers. So in Czech so, we, we say it drops into their pants. Yeah, <laughs> so, so his heart was there at the time and basically the dog like rips out his heart because it, he rips his pants. Yep. And And the king runs off somewhere. We don't know where he goes. I don't know. (laughs) So, (laughs) and anyway, the the dog. So now his, you know, he can't reattach his tail, and he doesn't want anyone messing with it, particularly cats. So he comes up with some elaborate scheme to like bury it somewhere where no cat can find it, and he he buries it. And this part of the story, there's more to the story, but. But these two little parts of the story are supposedly the origins of why, one, why fox terriers would get their tails cut. It's supposed to be, like, in honor of this dog. Like, you know, not necessary to do, but, hey, you know, we get our tails cut off because of this guy. And then then the other part would be why they dig around so much. And it's supposed to be, like, yeah, they're on a quest to find, like, this this mythical tale, this tale from their ancestors. So they're always randomly thinking mm-hmm. about it and like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be looking and they just start just digging up. So, so it's like, <laughs> so it's explaining why you cut their tails or explaining why they dig around so much. But, mm-hmm. but it's all explained in the way, like you tell children a story, like the here's our history, but he, but like, imagine if dogs could talk and they could tell this yeah, kind of story. It's very cute to tell the details. So, yeah, and there's more in that little story about that fox terrier, like. But that's yep. kind of the gist of, yeah, of it. Yeah. Uh, so it was all like uh, fun details. Like he had the tail so long, and he had so much vigor that he could cut tulips down with it. Yeah, <laughs> and then like them, them getting into arguments about. I guess they're called Dushins. <laughs> I thought they were dogs or whatever. Huh? They, they weren't Vienna dogs. Yeah, that that is how you say it. But that the pro- proper name is like Dutch hounds or Dushins, however you want to okay. say it. I don't know. I call them douche hounds. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but anyway, there's like a whole bit in the story how Dutch hounds or Dushins think that fox terriers are stupid for believing in this story and they're like mortal enemies or something mm-hmm. and it's crazy. So, I've never seen these so, two dog so to types. To prove fight, them wrong, that's why they're looking for the tail. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. For it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> write in the comments how you pronounce Dutch and Dutch hound, douche hound. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dachs hund. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that one's out. I'm going to say the English version. <laughs> how do you say it? <laughs> <laughs> trying to have an extra hand up German accent dog's <laughs> hund oh my god how do you say it in Czech I don't know <laughs> I thought it was Josef Czech but it's a wiener dog oh my god is it yeah, we say so then it's dog. Dog. but do you say wiener dog or do you say like wiener dog like, <laughs> like, what do you say <laughs> we say Josef Czech oh Josef Czech Josef Czech yes Josef Czech or Josef Czech yes what if I say yes of cheek? That's it. That's correct. But what if I say yes of cheek? We don't care. Like, we don't do this in Czech. <laughs> you said... I meant the longness it's long. of it's it. It's cheek. Yeah, but what if I say cheek? We don't understand because it's not English. We, we don't have these problems So I'm going to say everything short from <laughs> now on. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, uh, one detail I liked in this story was that Dashenka doesn't know what a dragon is. Mm. So he's like, listen here, little Dashenka, do you know what the dragon is? And he's like, meh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, Dashenka, the dragon is like a seven-headed deadly dog that eats puppies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... He describes it in ways that she could understand, which she still doesn't understand. It's, Shit. It's, it's like told in a very nice, nice wholesome way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there are like droplets of like Czech history nonsense. Mm. Like you said king, but mm-hmm. the guy is from the Ottoman Empire and he's like a Tatar Khan. Oh, uh, well, okay. The, For me. And he's definitely in the animated show not painted with a stereotypical Turkish attire. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's also in there. So okay, for me, like a tartar, a czar, a king—they're all—they're all like different things. I know, but okay, they're noblemen, and noblemen are the same for me. <laughs> in Czech, he's called Tatar Khan Pelikhan, which Pelikhan means it's somebody who's lost all their fur or lost all their like he's very bold. No, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or I should say the bold tartar or it's something. Like it's just trying to say so he's the first first letter. I see. And it's definitely not a reference to the Ottoman Empire. It's definitely mm. not. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the other story I wanted to quickly mention because I like the play on words like in this one you drop your heart into your pants and the dog accidentally ripped it out along with the pants and <laughs> the guy suddenly ran away but he still survived even without his heart well because he's heartless he's a nobleman I was about to say that. so I think in fact this story is real meaning is that fox terriers are the reason why people are bad <laughs> <laughs> yep the, the animation is lovely. I yeah, think it's you, very cute. If I you're at least a little bit curious and you want to know a little bit about obscure countries, cutesy animated history, then you should watch this. Yeah. So the second story I want to spoil is about uh, a fox terrier called Fox Leak, which again is a small... It's the same. Fox Leak was the first story that we just... Okay, it's about. again about Fox Leak. <laughs> So in this story, <laughs> the devil wants to go into heaven mm. and he asks Fox Leak to take him into heaven. And he's like, oh, I can't do that. You're the devil. <laughs> but I'm a g- g- good hearted dog. I want to help even the devil. And <laughs> But they don't know how to get him into heaven. So the devil suggests that he will climb into his mouth and they will take him into the heaven through the gates uh, in his mouth. <laughs> and so, so he jumps into Fox Leak's mouth. And uh, they don't explain if Fox Leak is dead or why is he there or yeah, whatever. No, he just right? goes to heaven. Right? I guess, you know, he's a, a legend. He has to he, die at some point. He's such a legend. He can go <laughs> anywhere, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and at the heavens, uh, they ask him, like, uh, have you been a good dog? Or can you go inside? and try to check. And he's like, mm, I can't go in. And then they find out that the devil is hiding inside of Fox Leak. And they say... Since you have a devil in your body, which is some Czech idiom for being too hyperactive, <laughs> there's something in English, like so, you have a um, hyperactive child that cannot sit down and sit still. I mean, yes, but I'm 
don't always say it. We'd say like only people would say it more like religiously. Like they not just even about children. They would just be like he or she's got the devil in them. Like oh yeah. So yeah, yeah. Like I <laughs> I mean it, it may or may not be about being hyper. It may or may not be towards a child. But mm. sure, if a child was running around like you know like they were crazy, someone that was religious. <laughs> might say they got the devil in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So because of that, he can't go to heaven and he has to bother people instead. So he's sent back down to earth to be a bother to all the people of the world because he's uh, now a little possessed dog with a devil in him. Yeah, so that's the fall of Fox League, like literally. <laughs> This great le- legend of a dog of d- falls. <laughs> again, a bad ending. But yeah, he gets to live on Earth again. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so just two examples. Uh, many other stories, uh, like about dog habits and about people. I wanted to check what they said about people because I forgot. Let me let me read this for you guys. Um, <laughs> Nick Platno, Dashos Bruce Budias Muset he he hit me see he ne lidio puse pipsito he ne smeki. Where did you finish? I don't even know where you finished. Smeki or smeki or sme sme smeki. Well, Chen went to say, nic platno, Dášo. Už brzo budeš muset jít mezi jiné lidi a budeš patřit do jiné smečky. Where's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> tak já ti něco povím o lidech. That's exactly what I meant to say. <laughs> so, so he's saying that he is Dasha, or bigger, Dasha, so Dashenka bigger is Dasha. So <laughs> she's going to have to meet other people as well. So he's going to tell her something about people. Hmm... Some dogs believe that people are evil, but if people were always evil, then dogs would never live with them. So that's not true at all. You don't have to worry. <laughs> Some people have wildly growing beards. They are called dads. <laughs> Hold on to those, because they are the leaders of the human pack. And that's why they are scary. The second type of people is smaller and has a squeaky little voice. Those are the moms. They will clean up your fur and... Comet, so you can go to those as well. The last type is the smallest. They squeak the most, and they are the most fun. So don't you worry when you meet other people. We are all the same creatures, and we're all connected by trusting each other and loving each other. Yeah. So I guess that's it for the Christmas, New Year's short special to be continued after we have visited the. <laughs> Japanese Czech Dashenka restaurant. Uh, <laughs> but you didn't say why it was a Christmas short special. So it's it's wholesome. It's nice. Okay, well, but you gotta say that. I said it at the beginning. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> 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 so, thank you for joining me. And uh, we'll talk about Karol Čapek on another episode. I was trying not to talk about war and all this depressing kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, keep it just to dogs this time. So thanks for coming on the podcast and see you on the next episode. Will I be on the next episode? Yeah. What's the next one? What is it? I wonder. I wonder which book you've read. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>